in a huge signal, like fireworks in the sky, like the bat signal, the Supreme Court on Friday got almost no coverage because the media didn't want you to know this, came out for the first time I've ever seen and took over the circuit judge positions. Conservative justices have been assigned by the chief justice to those battleground states. So now the cases go directly to the Supreme Court so the Democrats can't run the clock. It's Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. We are 59 days out from the inauguration. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna lay out some incredibly important facts. Facts vital to the future of the Republic. Vital that you research it and find out it's true, and then vital that you share it with everyone you know. The entire corporate press, domestically and internationally, the entire Democratic Party, foreign governments, the entire globalist system is ganged up on the American people and President Trump and the truth right now. Now, here are the facts. Joe Biden said that he was going to challenge the election all the way through to inauguration and that, that was the law, that he had the right to do it. That's actually true. Then he said that he thought that President Trump was going to try to steal the election and that they had a right to challenge that. Well, you do have a right to challenge an election, even if somebody didn't really try to steal it. So the idea that President Trump can't be challenging all this in court now is absolutely asinine. It's a fraud on its face. And CNN and the other mainstream corporate media are engaging in the greatest gaslighting in history, saying that as courts in Georgia and Pennsylvania and Michigan throw out his lawsuits that he's losing. No, he's not. I'll give you the facts right now. President Trump is in the lead. When they close those polls in those five battleground states, he had double and even triple the margins he had, depending on the state, that he got four years ago. And then come in all the illegal ballots. Thousands of affidavits have been signed that they were post-marking ballots days after the election that had come in after the election. This is all admissible in court. This is all sworn testimony. Then you've got, in multiple states, the fact that they didn't even check the signatures to match them violating law. All those ballots are fraudulent and are going to be thrown out. And in Georgia, the governor just came out yesterday and said, I'm certifying what the Secretary of State said, but I'm calling for a fraud investigation because a recount isn't enough. You've got to check the signatures, and that's what Trump is now getting authorized to do with his lawyers. They estimate upwards of 10% are going to be fake signatures. That is going to take Trump over the 13,000 votes he needs handily. I join many in backing a hand recount in urging a thorough investigation into any voting irregularities. Boom, Georgia is in play. But let's give you the big one right now. President Trump has said from the beginning that they're trying to steal this election with these fake ballots. They're gonna stuff the ballot boxes with them. They're gonna falsify the signatures. They're gonna have dead people voting. And so he said it's gonna end up at the Supreme Court because they've already wargamed all of this. And I sat back and I said, the Supreme Court may be so cowardly and blackmailed, some of them, that they may rule against Trump. Well, guess what? They didn't. In a huge signal, like fireworks in the sky, like the bat signal, the Supreme Court on Friday got almost no coverage because the media didn't want you to know this, came out for the first time I've ever seen and took over the circuit judge positions. They can do that legally and lawfully because there's a time frame here. So they have gone down to the federal circuit court level in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania, Georgia, and in Arizona, and they have put conservative justices have been assigned by the chief justice to those battleground states. So now the cases go directly to the Supreme Court so the Democrats can't run the clock. This is unbelievably important. And again, they'll be able to actually look at the law and the affidavits and the recounts showing that they didn't look at the signatures in Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and other areas, and that they have all these witnesses that worked at the post offices and that worked inside the polling places that they would not even look or compare the signatures. All of those ballots will then be thrown out and then Trump will win Michigan. Remember, he was winning massively with the Red Mirage, like Bloomberg told us he would do and like Zuckerberg said, and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars to again go set up these local groups to go to the governors and have them in dissent decrees say, we will take mail-in ballots even if they aren't properly filled out. 
Well, you can't do that. The legislatures didn't pass laws allowing that. So again, on multiple, multiple fronts, they have them. Then you've got the poll watchers being thrown out in Michigan and Pennsylvania and the video and the affidavits of the Democrats putting up cardboard over the windows so people couldn't even see in. And the Democrat poll watchers could be five to one, six to one, 10 to one against Republicans. Republicans were putting little squares or circles 50 yards away, 20 yards away, depending on the state. And Democrats were just fluttering around doing whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted and caught on video in Pennsylvania, Michigan, you name it, filling things out on the ballots. And then it goes on and on and on. So you're hearing Trump just lost Georgia. The governor says Trump's full of crap. Got to go to Infowars.com. We got his press conference. He says evidence of fraud, evidence of criminal activity, razor thin margin, and that he believes uh, that Trump will probably end up winning if there's a recount, a real recount, not the fake machine one. But I want to be clear. Trump is up against the globalist, the mainstream media, the corrupt big city machines, the corrupt blue state machines. He's up against just the public's general invincible ignorance, their weak mindedness in, in many of these blue state areas. But if the Supreme Court doesn't betray the truth, and doesn't betray the law. And if Trump keeps pressing and doesn't concede himself in these key states, the Supreme Court is gonna rule that he really won those states. And there is gonna be incredible fireworks because the corporate media, the establishment media, the globalist media don't want a nationalist patriot president. And they know Trump won in a landslide. The, the, the Republicans almost won the House back. They may keep the Senate, probably will. There isn't too much fraud, again, in the runoffs. And so this is a repudiation of their whole system. They need to repudiate the populist. They even brag that they're doing this. They even are now bragging with the Great Reset that they've used COVID to lock us down and demoralize us and to punish populist in the UK, populist here, and populist in Europe and Australia. I mean, this is incredible. So COVID was brought out, the hysteria, the lockdowns, the attack on the economy, because they knew Trump was so incredibly popular. They had to try to hurt the economy and then say that President Trump was to blame for the COVID. And now we see the headlines. Trump's attempt to steal the election unravels as coronavirus cases surge, but not coronavirus deaths. Remember? It was supposedly going to kill 4% of the population. That was going to kill 1%. That was going to kill one-tenth of a percent. It doesn't even kill one-tenth of one-tenth of a percent. And almost all of it is car wrecks, gunshot wounds, heart attacks, cancer, and major epidemiologists and other scientists, virologists, are coming out and saying this is the biggest hoax in the universe. It's a real virus. It does kill some people that are debilitated and old that have deficiencies, but it is the biggest deception ever. It is a fraud. It is a scam. It is a power grab. And now the head of the Davos group, the head of the UN, Bill Gates, they're all saying, oh, this is about cutting carbon and about the left taking over. So the left even though you hate lockdowns, this is us exercising our power. And the average leftist is even on NPR now. I've heard them going, well, we're going to use this to reshape society. So the lockdown never stops. Okay, everybody. They're even getting the average Democrat or socialist or communist on board with the fraud now. That's why they're admitting all this. This is so crazy. So we need Trump in so badly. Even if Biden had won, which he didn't. It's clear it's fraud. But give me a break. Didn't get more votes than Obama. Trump got 10 million more votes than he got last time. I mean, give me a break. You had many precincts in, in Pennsylvania and Michigan where over 100% of Democrats voted in the precincts. Again, the fraud goes on and on. We're in an ocean of fraud. And Tucker Carlson comes out and says, show me, Trump team, the forensics on the computers of the algorithmic fraud. They're suing in Wisconsin. They're suing in Michigan. They're suing in Pennsylvania to get into the voting machine raw data and not just have the same clerks that ran the scam run the same stuff through again, but have forensics. So again, we know there's a fraud because Trump's teams and, and separate mathematics groups have done this. Analytical groups have gone in and looked at the Secretary of State numbers that they published, downloaded the official numbers, which are impossible, that show those fraud graphs. So they know it's the same algorithm, the same vote totals, 70-plus uh, percent for Biden against Trump that came in in all these states late at night. So it was the same number, the same scam, the same type of fraud. So any mathematician or statistician can look at it and see there's fraud all over this, all sorts of rules being broken. Things don't balance out. But they haven't been able to get into the actual code yet. 
So that's what they can't get Tucker Carlson. And so I don't know if Tucker's confused or uh, what's happening there, but uh, I think Powell and Giuliani are doing a fabulous job and I 100% back him. And I've talked to the highest level lawyers in the White House that are on this. And they tell me that the strongest issue is the signatures. If they can get a real audit of the signatures and show in many cases there weren't even signatures on the damn ballots, uh, then Georgia's thrown out, uh, Pennsylvania's thrown out, and other areas of Trump wins. So again, the next big question I'll be covering tonight, 4 to 6 p.m. on my regular Sunday show, Owen Schroyer with Sunday Live, 6 to 8 after me, and we're working seven days a week right now, this is such a critical time, is the gaslighting, that's why they ignore the fact that the Supreme Court just started preparing to take over the federal cases. That's why they ignore Trump's overall strategy is because they just want to keep acting like Biden is the new president and saying he's the president-elect when that's not an office and building that up so that their own constituents and others politically actually believe that when the Supreme Court rules in favor of Trump that the election has been stolen, which is what they did four years ago saying he was a Russian agent and it was illegitimate. That's why everyone that supports this country still existing, because this is a globalist takeover. If, if Biden gets in, he's going to extend the lockdown forever, bring in a depression, bring us to our knees. They admit that. They don't want free market. They don't want capitalism. They want big mega banks to control a bunch of slaves through corporate fascism and socialism at the grassroots. Klaus Schwab, all of them have said it. That's what we've all got to donate in the runoff races in Georgia for the Senate. Uh, we've all got to give to the super PACs. We've all got to march. We've all got to get involved. We've all got to give to the Trump campaign like never before because he's having to spend tens of millions of dollars on lawyers and on these recounts and on these forensics. And he's doing a fabulous job, by the way. The media is not covering it so that he has the money to be able to continue to do this. This is, again, an incredible war that's happening and all of us have to be engaged and be getting the truth out. And you also have to be reaching out to your Democrat friends and others and explaining to them that they've been brainwashed. That's why Trump needs even more money. And I know the White House listens. They need to start running targeted national ads on the internet and on TV showing Joe Biden saying, Will you pledge not to declare victory until the election is independently certified? Yes. Show a clip of Hillary saying, we're going to contest this all the way through to the inauguration if we lose. And that's the law. We have a right to do it. And Pelosi saying, it doesn't matter what happens with the election next week. We're going to be inaugurating Joe Biden on the 20th. Whatever the end count is, but on the election that occurs on Tuesday, he will be elected on January 20th. He will be inaugurated president of the United States. They've got to show people that they're the ones that have this strategy all along. And now they just stole it once they closed the polls that night by adding all these fake ballots in over the next week. And that that is what the fraud is. That is what the crime is. And that Trump saying we're going to contest this is his right and is under the law and is a right the Democrats had as well. Al Gore didn't concede for 37 days. We're not even up to 20 days right now. So again, no one can debate that this is a gaslighting, this is a fraud. When they run headlines that it's dangerous and Trump's a dictator and, oh, the military needs to remove him, that's why they've been pushing for him to be removed before January 20th because they know he has a legitimate right and real evidence to fight them. So this is the immovable object runs into the unstoppable force. This is going to be absolutely insane, absolutely incredible. And all of us have to be engaged and all of us have to be fighting because this is now a court of public opinion issue. This is now political. And I make the central point that, yes, he lost. The evidence is clear that Biden's a fraud. And the media is gaslighting us and announcing he's the winner. We understand that. We know that. But the bigger issue is Biden and his son are on record being communist Chinese agents. So even if he legitimately won, he should be removed for being a foreign asset. Everything they said about Trump and the Russians wasn't true. With Biden, it's completely true with the Russians as well. The Moscow mayor, three and a half million. I, I mean, this, the Ukrainians, tens of millions. The, the Chinese, hundreds of millions. His son, oh my God, I meet with the head of Chinese intelligence and on and on and on. He's disappeared. There's criminal investigations into me and my dad. Southern District, all that's real. And the media suppressed it. And that's the real crime is big tech censoring all the election fraud news, all the pedophilia news, all the fact that the Bidens are foreign assets because they want to put that aging, doddering, amnesiac 
in the White House so they fully have a puppet with him and Kamala that the big corporations control so they can keep us under lockdown and gut this nation. America is under a military globalist attack, an economic attack, a cultural and spiritual attack. So don't let them demoralize you. Don't let them piss you off. Get motivated and take action peacefully with the truth. We have the truth. At this critical time when every other place has been shut down, we have Band.Video. So when you share the articles and this video from Band.Video to your email list, your text message, put up signs, hand out cards, download it, put it on other platforms, whatever you do, get this information out now. God bless, good luck, and understand Trump has been reelected. And if the Supreme Court does his job, it will get certified, and that he will continue on as the 45th president for four more years. God bless. The answer to 1984 is 1776. InfoWars has been banned.